Hello and welcome to Talking Film, uh, the ultimate catch-up news service. This week we're going to talk about a whole array of uh, movie news, including Willy Wonka, Star Wars, and Wolverine, plus so much more um, on this October 31st Halloween uh, today. So let's get straight to the news. Oh, and by mm -hmm. the way, my name's Daniel. We have... Nick on the other side, who was acting like a ghost. Happy, it's a Halloween special. <laughs> oh, I put my mask back on then. My my elaborate costume. I put my mask back on. Let's get on with the news. First, we have uh, probably arguably the biggest news that we are going to get another Willy Wonka movie from Warner Brothers again. Um, but this time, it's not a remake based on the popular Roald Dahl book, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, because, you know, we've already got two movies of, uh, of that book. So instead, we're going to get a brand new, total, uh, brand new, unique, uh, story, uh, based on Willy Wonka, because Warner Brothers has, uh, acquired the intellectual property for the character. So it's what it seems like it's going to be based like a prequel um, based on his adventures before he became uh, known as Willy Wonka, the chocolatier uh, wizard, if you call him that. So, Nick, what do you think of this news? Ah, try and think something positive. Try and think of something positive to say. <laughs> Trying really hard. Um, I... Uh... So soon after Jim was death, it seems a little bit insensitive. I'll say that. Um, to announce this. Uh, I, I quite like both Wonka movies. I like the, first, the original the best. But I don't mind Johnny Depp's either. It's all right. Um, mm. Yeah, Johnny Depp's is uh, not that bad. People say it's like it's horrible. It's not that bad, really. It's really not that bad, no, it's not. It's some, it, you know, Johnny Depp has a, uh, you know, he has a, a way of uh, making characters eccentric and going really over the top with his caricatures. Um, and it works kind of for Wonka. Uh, maybe he does a little bit too much, but it, it works for Wonka. Yeah, at least he uh, wasn't being like a totally the same character that Gene Wilder portrayed. They're completely two unique Wonkas. No, exactly, exactly. And I think this one will also be... Uh, oh yeah, who is going to be Willy Wonka this time around? That's Chris Pratt, story everybody. For discuss for another day. <laughs> Chris Pratt. Um, when they actually start talking about casting news, um, I guess the idea is to re like it is an intellectual property that's been sitting there idle for a while, and the studio wants to, uh, you know, uh, capitalize on it. So they're obviously yeah. trying to make a fresh Willy Wonka approach for. The new generation, just like Disney is making new Star Wars, um, you know, we've got new Ghostbusters and stuff. It's like trying to update old nostalgia for a younger generation. Yep. It's no different for the other, those other things. Um, so, forgetting Gene Wilder for just a minute and and the insensitiveness of him just having passed, um, like it might be okay. This is not a bad idea. I do wish that if they had um done a whole new story that they just do it with like an original character because we, we really are short on new original blockbuster like intellectual property like franchises we need to start to start franchises not just reboot them uh, but uh, yeah well beggars can't be choosers so we're gonna reboot we're gonna have it. a new wonka we boot, reboot it and start a new franchise oh god hey That's, that's the, the common thing. And meanwhile, Charlie in the Great Glass Elevator is just sitting on the shelf, like, oh, make me a movie. Me they they a did movie. incorporate a little bit of that into the new, into the last one with Johnny Depp. Yeah, I guess that's what they did. There was a glass elevator. <laughs> mm. there's, there's a Great Glass Elevator in both movies. Mm. <laughs> oh, I don't know. This is that the, uh, the Gene Wilder one just kept going up in uh, just keep going up and up and up. That's it. They're just while well, the Johnny Depp one had more to a character towards it, it had all these different buttons that he could do. 
the better Jim Holder one. Uh, but I really don't know how I feel about this. On one side, it seems like it could be a cool little story thing. I mean, we got elements of the prequel based on Willy Wonka's adventures of being an explorer in the Charlie and Chocolate Factory. Uh, when he's looking for the uh, coca beans and then he stumbles across these weird different creatures before he uh, met the Oompa Loompas and decided to work in his factory. So we've already started to sort of go into that territory with Wonka. But then on the other side, who do you get to play the character? Do we get Johnny Depp back? <laughs> what do we do with this? Like, I don't know. Is it... Do we, do we want to... Depp back like that. But like, how do you make know. how do you make a unique story that we we're so accustomed to, uh, the Charlie and Chocolate Factory oh, book and story? Yeah. Like, it's, everyone's so familiar with that story. It's such a well known, well told story. They should tell the tell the story from the perspective of one of the other children, like Veruca Salt or something. That would be cool. Because that's essentially just or... become the same movie, just with a different point of view. And she's True. not the, the most interesting character. That's why we always go with Charlie. Yeah, no, Charlie's definitely, yeah, yeah it's hard to tamper with what role Dar of definitely movie in that. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I, so I don't know. I, I, I'm okay with this. Uh, it could be worse news. They had to be worse news before. It could be worse news. Technically, yeah, true. But I guess we'll see. Because uh, I forgot oh, to mention, and David Heyman. We'll, we'll, we'll um, wait and see. That's yeah. the old thing we always say every episode. We'll wait and see. You just never know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> could be good, could be shit. Yeah, bad. <laughs> but I forgot to mention that... We at Be least bad. have a good creative cons uh, consultant uh, working on this project because David Heyman, who has produced all the Harry Potter films and also the recent uh, Paddington uh, movie, and that did very well, it's, uh, he's going to uh, produce this project as well. So, it's in good hands at the moment. <sighs> so, we'll see where it goes from here. <laughs> this thing, just before we move on, this is something that's interesting. There's a lot of good hands in Hollywood at the moment. There are a lot of good hands in Hollywood at the moment. And yet the execs seem to be making decisions and the studios uh, that, that, that mire the quality of the original content, content. like in the, it's just becoming blockbuster franchise after reboot, after blockbuster franchise, prequel, sequel. And, but, but there's actually good hands on this stuff. So it's, 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 a bit, it's a bit of a paradox, really. People who grew up with Jaws, people who grew up with E.T., and, uh, you know, Martin Scorsese, and Taxi Driver, and, like, it's, it's, it's weird. It's a weird paradox that we're existing, living in right now. I can't wait for Oscar season. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, and now we're going to be talking about Star Wars. Uh, that Donald Glover will be playing the role of young Lando. In the young Han Solo Star Wars <laughs> spin-off, which we still don't really have a fish tie to. Hey, you're excited. Yeah, can't wait for this movie now. Um, obviously, directors again, some more good, like some of the best hands in Hollywood. Um, uh, Phil Phil Ogg and, and uh, Chris Miller. Um, like I, or as soon as as soon as they announced Han Solo spin off, I was like, oh no! And then they say Phil Lord, Chris Miller. I'm like, yes! And now this Donald Glover is Lando, and that's like, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm fully on board. This is gonna be fantastic. Mm. I'm not quite on. Like, I'm still excited for it, um, but I haven't seen Donald Glover's work before. So, to me, he's a relatively. Uh, a new actor to me because I haven't seen any of his works. Uh, yeah, I haven't I seen really, Community, I haven't seen I, Atlanta, I haven't seen any of his works yet. I, I know him from that meme where he walks through a in Community, like the Community meme where he walks through the door with the with the pizza and everything's on fire and he drops the pizza. 
That's all I know him from. <laughs> uh, just that one picture, that one gift. A meme, the gift, yeah, the gift. Uh, but I, I need to watch Community. I'm, I'm interested to see what this is going to be like. And the, I guess the risk with the Han Solo spinoff is uh, fans might get a bit outraged if it leans too much on the comedy side like uh, Phil and Chris are known for. Um, well, then you've got to expect not. some comedy then from these two, then. Yeah, I guess. Mm. As long as maybe Better. this sort of, like, Force Awakens. That wasn't too much on the comedy side, but they had, you know, obviously humour in it. Yeah. Well, that was that was a perfect balance for a Star Wars movie, but I think of Chris Lord, like, I think of 22 Jump Street, you know? Like, just... That kind of comedy genius Lego can't movie. be go to waste. I would be perfectly happy if this hand solo is just a full comedy. Like I'm, I'd be, I'm on board. But I just think hardcore fans would be a bit disappointed if they don't take it a little bit seriously. Yeah. Now I, I just remembered a scene from the Lego Movie where they had the Millennium Falcon and they had uh, Han Solo, Chewie, and Lando oh, yeah. in the ship. I'm like. Did you guys know before you make this movie? Was that just an Easter egg for what you guys, your next project? <laughs> well, now it's a, it's a retroactive Easter egg. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see with what the uh, Han Solo film is going to come. I think what they're going to have to like, maybe come to an issue is that something has come before the events of The Empire Strikes Back. Like, something went down between the two. So if they become friends, I wonder if we're going to get that confrontation between the two before they went their separate mm. ways in this movie. Or we're yeah, going to get that maybe in future true. sequels if they want to do this Young Han, Lo young Han Solo uh, fr uh, franchise, if you will. Yep, because we definitely we know that every single backstory needs to be explored in its own movie. So that's yeah. why we're having that. Yeah. Yeah. And because you can do so much with the, this young cast that they, they've cast for these characters of Han Solo and Lando, it's not going to be one movie, people. It's going oh, to it's be... Oh, it's a trilogy. Sure. No, it's five films. Oh, it's going to be five films. <laughs> five films. Yeah. That's the new norm. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, joking aside, uh, Logan, the first trailer no, for no, Logan no. Uh, premiered, um, and... Actually, to surprising results. I don't think anyone expected the trailer, what we got, <laughs> to be honest. Well, I think the first hint was the poster, um, and then the title, and and then uh, ever since then, they've just been building this this, this hype, you know, this this uh, image of what this Logan movie is going to be, and it's, I can't wait. It looks so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen the other Wolverine films. I've only seen half of Wolverine's Origins before I turned that crap movie off. Um, but I haven't seen Wolverine at all. It didn't really interest me at all. Oh, okay. But this movie interests me. Well, I like the direction they're going with this film. So I have seen both in their entirety. Uh, but I haven't seen Origins for quite a while. I, I watched it a long time ago when I was uh, still a stupid kid. Um, I didn't know any better. Um, Why? Wow, were you one of those people who said Wolverine Origins is the best X-Men movie ever? No. No, no, no. I've done way worse than that before, but that's definitely not something I did. Transformers um, 2? <laughs> yeah, you know, you know. Uh, Transformers is the greatest, my favorite movie of all time. That's what, m me at 14. Anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah so Logan um, no sorry the Wolverine was actually pretty cool like I didn't obviously in hindsight Origins is a pile of trash but uh, the Wolverine was pretty cool it had its flaws and it had its faults um, but the it had a very almost a manga anime kind of style because it was set in Japan and, uh, yeah and one of the things I, I wrote in the when, when I published the news story of um, on this trailer was I'm really really um, excited about the direction that that Logan seems to be taking because it represents a, a new genre that the superhero movies don't go into very often like the dark serious almost post-apocalyptic western or like mm, yeah like video games do it a lot like it yeah. almost seems yeah, like it the last of us minus the zombies <laughs> the last of us um, 
Yeah, a lot of people made that connection. God, I can't, I can't, yeah, I can't wait uh, until until the zombies come into the trailer. It's like, they're actually making it the last of them. <laughs> it's going to be zombies. But uh, it was, it was, it was a really good trailer, and I really, really uh, I enjoyed it so much that I don't even really need the movie to, to be happy. <laughs> like, if that trailer is all, all we get, I'm, that's, that's good with me. And <laughs> Yeah. Hmm. Um, I'm trying to think in my head, where does this movie get positioned in the X-Men timeline? Because if there's any movie, uh, movie, uh, universe that's out there, even more confusing than the DC, it's the X-Men universe. Um, yeah, no, this one... definitely in the, this is definitely after Days of Future Past in the timeline, uh, of the original trilogy, like the, okay. yeah, Are there's no sure? way this is in the... Are you sure about that? It could be after Apocalypse. Well, I haven't seen Apocalypse, so I don't know if, it, if the events of Apocalypse lead into that. Oh. But I, it's the only X Men movie I haven't seen. Um, what? Yeah, I know. Oh man, well, I can't tell you. Oh, Damn it, I can't, I can't say it just anything. Makes then. more sense. Because it makes more sense to me. Sorry, you go on. Uh, well, I I can't say anything because. It'd be spoilers for X-Men Apocalypse. Um, huh. Because something, in, uh, like, one of the characters in the trailer sort of hint, Apocalypse sort of hints towards. So that's why I'm sort of thinking, is it after Apocalypse? Because they hint this character that's in the trailer. No. Oh, okay. I'm not quite sure. I don't know. I s okay, so you need to see Apocalypse. Because uh, I was watching the trailer, I was convinced it was the, the timeline. You know how at the end of Days of Future Past, the yeah. timeline split in two. And he and, and 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 Logan is back in the the school for gifted and talented. Um, and yeah, but ev um, everyone looks so like Hugh Jackman, uh, Logan. He looks so old. Like he's shaken. He's got all these like scars on his back now. Like he seems like yeah, he's an old much. Man, Logan, he, he, yeah, he's much right. older than he was yeah. in Days of Future Past. So then I'm like, yeah. I'm stuck between the two now because, like, ugh. this is set in the far future. So this is set after lots of stuff has happened. Yeah, no. And lots of man. Hmm. Do you think because of that we're never going to get any more of the original cast that appeared in the end of Days of Future Past? No. No, that was the way to end that story. I think that's that's how that ends. You never say never, not with Hollywood these days, but... Well, this could be the last Hugh Jackman Wolverine movie, so... Oh, it almost certainly is. So that sort of hints that yeah. we're not going to get any more of the original uh, X-Men. Okay, I think we've talked about X-Men a lot now, about Logan. Anything else, or shall we move on? No, I just want to end it up by saying that um, I'm really... Like, I'm actually really surprised by how great this movie is turning out, and I just, hopefully... The final product delivers. Yep, well, let's hope so. It actually looked good. I'm, I'm actually really interested in a Wolverine movie for once. A solo Wolverine movie. Um, and uh, now let's get hooked on a feeling uh, with the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 teaser. Ooga track. chaka, ooga ooga chaka. <laughs> I can't stop this feeling. Mm hmm? Oh, sorry, go on, go on. <laughs> we'll just sing the song. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> uh, what's the next story? <laughs> um, yeah, what are your thoughts the trailer? The sneak peek. Um, Technically, it's a teaser so trailer. It's just a sneak peek. It's, it's not even... A, they're not using the term teaser, they're using the term sneak peek, which, which is a sneak peek, peek uh, as some shots of the movie... It's not really even supposed to be resemble a trailer. There will be another trailer uh, that's going to be uh, different. Okay, so so by that standard, the Star Wars The Force Awakens teaser trailer, that wasn't a teaser trailer that Disney said it was. That was actually a first look yeah, sneak it's, peek. It's, <laughs> it's I think the reason they do it is because the word teaser is becoming kind of a bad word these days. People yeah. are like, no, a teaser. I can't give us a trailer, you know? Yeah, no. And, so then, you have like, like, and then you have like... Paramount, I remember Paramount last year where they had like Mission Impossible Rogue Nation teaser trailer 
and then I watched it, and it's, it's actually, it was like a minute long, and it's actually the advertisement of the trailer tomorrow. Like, I hate when that happens. Yeah. You guys yeah. are saying there was that a teaser. Was like, what? Last year. I'm glad that that's dying out because people are getting annoyed with it. With it. Um, but this is a sneak peek, not for the trailer. This is a sneak peek for the movie, and a, an actual proper trailer will follow for the movie that will be a lot longer. Um, so, but based on the sneak peek, actually, yeah. on the thoughts of the sneak peek. Yo, I'm still um, feeling a teaser on, because like, this was. Do I need footage to be excited for Guardians of the Galaxy 2? Yes. No? You need footage. What, you want to look at a black screen? <laughs> look at a feeling? <laughs> so, and then it just no. has Guardians of the Galaxy like, 2. <laughs> you, you guys are going to watch it. Not, if Marvel? we had just released a black screen, we hooked on a feeling, I would have been like, oh my god, Guardians of the Galaxy just had the title Guardians of the Galaxy 2, I would have been like, whoa, yes. Uh. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is I was excited for this movie since the, the credits rolled on the first one. So, um, really, every, everything I saw in this sneak peek just rode the hype train. You know, it's just already riding the hype train. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was a good sneak peek. But like, as opposed to the Logan trailer, which was actually a trailer, this was just a sneak peek, and it's, it's not enough to really. Uh, give me a taste of what the movie's going to be about, or what the, what the movie's going to, how it's going to maybe look, maybe a bit different than Guys Galaxy Two, first Guys Galaxy. Sorry. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm going to call it a teaser trailer because it is going to be marketed towards Doctor Strange, and that'll be before the film. So, for that sense, I'm calling it a teaser trailer because it's going to be in the pictures. Um, the teaser left me wanting more and it left me feeling eh, it looks good like it was i guess it's just the way the teaser is done because all it is is just basically a couple of images of the old cast uh back and you just get a scene of drax hugging uh peter so yeah <laughs> i did <laughs> Well, well, it was yeah, enjoyable, yeah. it was entertaining. I'm That's like, is that it? Is that what I really wanted? The Guardians of the Galaxy 2 teaser? I remember going to the Galaxy 1 teaser trial, and that instantly hooked me with the, the music. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. That was a teaser. This is a sneak peek. They're a little bit different. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm looking forward to, to, the, to the first main oh, yeah. trailer. But this, is, a... this was designed, this was actually cut together very... James Gunn wrote, this was very cut, cut together very quickly. And, yeah, um, you could tell by that. Uh, yeah, it was cut together quickly because people were expecting something with Doctor Strange, and they were, they, were, they they put it together to prevent the outrage that would have happened if there was no Guardians trailer. Yeah, but first Doctor impressions Strange. are everything, and now this is my first impressions of Guardians too, and I'm just not as excited yeah, as I, I should be right now. You know, don't rush yeah. don't rush something just because it's not ready for this particular movie. Wait for it. You got Star Wars, right. you got yeah. Moana. It's like Disney's r running out of blockbuster films for the rest of the year. Yeah. Um, take taking as a teaser trailer and comparing it to the first Guardians of the Galaxy teaser trailer, which mind you had to sell us the, the concept of Guardians because we didn't we weren't familiar with them. Yeah, this but that trailer, that, trailer, that, that, but, that but was like still really inferior to, to that. Yeah, I, I'll wait for the first full trailer to judge what we're going to get for the sequel. Because um, there's certain characters that we still haven't seen that were just basically just giving us glimpse, glimpses of the old cast um, with some of them out of shot like Amora um, for some reason. Um, <laughs> but I think any to take anything out of this teaser slash sneak peek um, we got Baby Groot in like a little red jacket of him. And that alone got me sort of excited. <laughs> That was like the only thing, it was like the last <laughs> shot of the trailer, I'm like, oh, okay, this looks cool. There's nothing but, in uh, the trailer itself that was disappointing, like, I loved all of the, the trailer, but it was just the way it was edited together, yeah. just seemed a little bit anticlimactic, I guess. Yeah, like, the start of it, like, Gamora, like, just jumping, like, we, we see her run, cut to black, and then we see her jump, cut to black. <laughs> wait, wait, what? Where's she jumping to? <laughs> okay, that just felt very random, not a well. Um, but... She's trying to reach them cookies. <laughs> I say negative, but like, it it was entertaining, but it just I I, I guess this is going to Galaxy Two. I was I was wanting something I guess bigger or meatier or something that would just get me 
excited mm. like I was the first Guardians of the Galaxy, and nothing really showed me. Like even Doctor Strange looked really cool the first trailer. So yeah, yeah, that's job with the first and then the second trailers generally get a little bit um, worrisome. Mm-hmm. Uh, remember the Avengers two trailer? How good was that first Avengers two trailer? Uh, all like the Avengers months. trailers were awesome. <laughs> yeah. And yet I watched all of them, and yet the movie, like the movie, was just like still exceeding my expectations of everything I've seen before. It. Like, like what? How does that happen? Yeah, the first Avengers. Yeah, definitely. Same, same thing for Captain America, uh, Winter Soldier, and Civil War. Marvel does a good job with trailers, so this is a little bit weird because it seems like a little bit of a weak effort compared to their other stuff. Yeah. But that's why I think they're using sneak peek and they're going to reveal an actual first trailer. What? Probably Star separate. Wars? Probably? That's going, to be, that's going to be their thing. Yeah, like Star Wars, like where they just had the bloody Falcon or whatever. So no, no, no. Like I said, I, like, I, I meant like, do you think they're going to release like the full trailer of Guardians 2 with Star Wars Rogue One? December. Oh. It gives them a whole two months uh, working on a full trailer for it. Oh, I don't know. Honestly, they can release it with whatever, but. Yeah. Um, uh, when it's ready, as you say. When it's ready, they'll release it. Yeah, definitely. So we've got Thor next year as well, and there's another one, isn't there? Yes, yeah, Spider-Man. Three... Spider-Man. Which, we, which we might get a, a trailer very soon. Like, uh, not very soon, but surely in the next three months at least, we should be getting the first trailer for Spider-Man, because that comes so, out in July. So next year is the first year with three MCU movies. Yep. Oh, I'm pumped. <laughs> awesome. Excited. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we'll move on to our last story, which is that Toy Story 4 has been delayed once again. Now, 2019, June 21st, 2019, and The Incredibles 2 has been pushed up a year to June 15th, 2018. Oh, I'm so disappointed. Why, why disappointed? What, Toy Story 4 getting pushed? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm different, but to be honest, the, the biggest story out of this is the fact that Pixar still can't seem to decide on what movies that want to release on what dates. Hmm. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. They've been doing this for, what, a decade or whatever. It feels like a decade. They've been moving dates, delaying things, switching things around, promising things that still are in a very, very early development. And um, it's just, they're getting themselves into more trouble than actually the releasing of the movies. I don't I don't know if they did that before in the past, but like the like there's like one film out of like the first nine or ten Pixar films and I think that was Cars because I remember that was supposed to come out November 2005 and they pushed that back to summer 2006 but then it seems like but it seemed like yeah it seemed like ever since Cars 2 getting pushed forward it seems it seems like now they've they've done it more recent like they've done it more I guess consistently than they've, they've done in the past it was very rarely they would push the film back. Mm. They, they were locked in that release date this whole time, and now it seems like it's happening all the time. The Good Dinosaur being uh, delayed, Brave got delayed, uh, Force Four has now been delayed twice. Mm, twice, yeah. Yeah, twice. To be honest, I'm not surprised because um, apparently, uh, uh, The Incredibles Two is actually. I read a story. I read the story. And apparently, uh, Incredibles Two is is coming along very fast. It's like it's, it's ahead. Of... So so they they've moved that up. It's 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 more to do with the Incredibles Two than Toy Story Four. So hopefully, yeah. um, uh, so hopefully, uh, there's no director change. So I'm not very I'm not very worried. You know, Brave had a director change. Good Dinosaur had a director change. Um, so Cars Two, I'm not worried. maybe. <laughs> Didn't like the director got stepped down to co-director was, and John Lester took all the realms. I, of that? I, I, I'm still trying to work out what went wrong with Cars Two. And it's been what five years. <laughs> Cars Three, on the other hand, will be Pixar's number one best movie of all time. Um, wow! <laughs> you have lots of faith in this film. <laughs> I can't wait for that teaser. That teaser better be coming soon. Anyway, oh, yeah. so Cars yeah, Three, then we've got Coco, which I'm actually looking forward to. Yeah. The most out of their upcoming yeah, slate. Yeah, Coco, more so the Cars three, that's for sure. Yeah, and and then closely followed by Incredibles two. Oh yeah. Uh, 
because mainly because of Brad Bird. I didn't actually really want an incredible sequel, but because Brad Bird behind it, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's I'm I'm all for this. Said no one um, ever. You're like the only one that didn't want to, really want an incredible sequel, <laughs> and everyone else wanted one. No, because I completely understood what was ha- the, the why what the first one was about, you know, and that Brad Bird never really envisaged it having a sequel. But he never intended to have a sequel. And now everybody's like, give me a sequel, give me a sequel. So Fredbear's like, all right, I'll give you a sequel. You know? <laughs> well, Pixar's basically like, you get a sequel, you get a sequel, you get a sequel. Yeah, they're That's catching they up for like. miss, miss lost time. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully, hopefully after Toy Story 4, we uh, we start to see some more original projects coming yeah, well, up. Got, and from what I've read, we've got what two I've heard, original there are Pixar films. A lot of different yeah, we've got two for 20, 2020, which are three months apart, which is very weird for Pixar films to be three months apart of release. Well, who knows if that'll stick, though, but... Uh, they, gosh, I really wish they didn't do this two-in-one-year thing. No, I'm just... happy the two-one-year thing. I want it spaced out. Like, I'm happy what they're doing, like, summer, November, if Disney's getting that, you know, if Disney's not releasing a movie that year. But three months apart for one studio's film, that just seems crazy to me. Not even, mm. not even Disney Animation has a movie three months mm. apart of release. Like, what was, what is up with that with the 2020 Pixar schedule? Let's be honest, it's not going to last because Pixar can't make up their minds, so it's, it's going to have to shift those no, dates anyway. One so of those original, don't, don't one, one of those original films will get pushed up, and Toy Story Four will go pushed back to 2020, so it's ten years after Toy Story Three. Hey, <laughs> don't worry, that's probably going to happen. <laughs> Oh no! It's 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 Pixar's Fantastic. Avatar two. It's just gonna get keep pushing back of this movie. It's oh, don't even start with Avatar two. Oh my gosh! I can't wait for Avatar six. Um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, so yeah. So that's about all I have to say about that. But obviously, Incredibles two being a bit closer <laughs> is good news. Yeah, I'm stoked. I I'm happy that it's less than you. Uh, less you, that less. I mean, God, a year shorter of a wait than what we were, we're going to get. And now it's only basically a year exactly and a half. Less than three years away. Yeah, a year and a half. It's basically a year and a half away, if you really think about it, nearly. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and hopefully next year we'll get the Incredibles 2 teaser trailer. Oh! Um, <laughs> I'm excited. That should be attached to Coco, but I bet you it's not. Probably, no, that <laughs> Wrecker Ralph 2 will get attached to Coco, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, I just thought of that. Wreck-It Ralph 2 and Tw- The Incredibles 2. two. Like, two films that have been waiting for a sequel uh, for a little while for those. Oh my god. That's going to be awesome. Yay! And Frozen 2's <laughs> not far. Woo! No. <laughs> um, yeah, well, anyway. Yeah, good. Awesome. Uh, thank you for tuning in for Talking Film uh, this week. Um, if you want to like, uh, follow us on Facebook, you can like our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash everything film. That's where we put our news, reviews, everything else, trailers. Uh, you can follow us at, uh, on Twitter at everythingfilm1. You can uh, follow us on our uh, WordPress blog at uh, everythingfilmreviews.wordpress.com. Yeah, that's it. Um, and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. I think that's where we all, all we are at the moment. So, thank you for tuning in, uh, and uh, see you next time. Bye for now. Until next.